Hey guys, it's Ed Bird, and I'm back today with an initial review of the Adidas Adi Zero Takomi Sen 6. So I couldn't resist picking up this lightweight racing shoe from Adidas from their Adi Zero line as soon as it appeared online on the UK store. This boost here in the midsole and Adidas's light strike cushioning in the rest of the midsole. These only weigh in at 215 grams for a UK size 11 and a half. I have sized up by a half in these shoes um, as a bit of an experiment really. I've been doing that with a lot of the shoes that I picked up recently just to see if it makes a little difference and it certainly does. Today I'm wearing this Hufflepuff hat. Uh, my wife tells me I'm a Hufflepuff apparently. I'm not entirely sure what that means. Maybe you guys out there will understand a little bit more. Apparently it's good that I'm not a Slytherin or something but um, yeah, I'm not too sure about all this Harry Potter stuff. I'm more of a shoe wizard rather than a normal wizard. Anyway, enough of that ridiculous nonsense. Let's dive into the specifics of the shoe. So this shoe is kind of like a customized version of the other shoes on the Adi Zero line really, the Adios 4, um, which I've really enjoyed running in recently. This version here, the Sen 6, is stated as being designed by master shoe designer Takumi Omori. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm very sorry to um, Japanese speakers if I've got that wrong. Um, but the guy looks like a really cool dude. He um, custom designs shoes for Adidas and has done for some time. I think he's been designing shoes for them since about 1999, so a fair old time. I think function and fit are the key design ethos behind uh, a lot of his designs. Certainly this one does fit within that remit. So from the very first Adi Zero shoe produced back in 2008, that was worn by Gabri Selassie in the Berlin Marathon, to this highly refined shoe, and very red shoe, I think you have to say. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite so red and orange, apart from an orange. Does this shoe have what it takes to challenge the Vaporfly series? Very interesting that on doing some research into the design of the shoe, that the designer used lasts of actual runner's feet uh, in the design process. It's apparently like an inside out process. He likes to work from looking at a person's foot and then kind of building the design of the shoe around it. But I bet he hasn't got a mold of my weird looking feet. Kind of look like torpedoes, They're just really odd. I've always had weird looking feet. A few years ago, Adidas opened up a special design center in Japan to kind of further their efforts in developing the best performance running shoes. I think efforts from other manufacturers aside of Nike have kind of gone by the wayside a little bit over the last couple of years. Everybody's talking vapor flies, everybody's interested in those. I mean, yeah, I really like them. I really like discussing them and talking about them and trying them out. But there's lots of other shoe technology out there that's kind of been bubbling under the surface. And as a shoe sleuth, I like to explore all options open to me. So after an initial run in the Takumi Sen 6, here are my thoughts. First off, starting with cushioning and midsole. So after running an initial effort in these, I found that midsole to be very responsive, quite firm in fact, certainly towards the back of the shoe here, but that's not really where you're going to spend the time in this shoe. It's all about this forefoot area. It's certainly a welcome change to have a little less of a drop from the heel to toe. That light strike foam that features in the sort of second and third thirds of the shoe, I guess, of the midsole at least, it's quite firm, it's quite rigid. It's a tad tougher than anything else I've tried out of recent time. But because of that, it makes the boost that bit more noticeable in the forefoot area. It's certainly very slight. There's only a thin piece of boost there. It's very cushioned, it's very responsive. As you press down on that forefoot area, you can feel it push back. It's a really quite exhilarating feeling. But clearly this shoe is about minimal weight. A 215 grams in a size 11.5 UK, I think you'll agree that certainly it's a light shoe. So in terms of midfoot cushion, it's beautiful. A really, really nice shoe to run in. You feel very connected with the road underneath. Moving on to the upper of the shoe, certainly it's an outstanding shoe in terms of comfort. It's a mesh type material over pretty much the whole shoe. There's a super soft and very, very thin tongue. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the tongue in the Pegasus Turbo 2. The tongue has two very, very light, very thin, black elasticated pieces that join up, must be round about the midfoot area here, and end just about where the boost begins in the midsole. I think it ends just for the third eyelets on my shoe. 
and they kind of grip around the foot. So when you first put the shoe on, you've got to kind of wrestle with the tongue a little bit to get it into the right position and make sure those black elasticated pieces are kind of flat down, flush to the foot. That was difficult to say that. Lockdown over the top of the foot here is easily achieved. There's lots and lots of eyelets, so the runner has the ability to customize the shoe if needed. I had no problem just lacing the thing up straight out of the box, and I got a great fit. Laces are kind of a rounded shape rather than the flat ones that appear on a lot of shoes at the moment. I have to say fit is quite snug, certainly through the arch. I think this isn't gonna be a shoe for people with a very wide foot. Alas, I have nice and narrow feet, so I managed to achieve great fit with going up half a size. I think a 11 for me would have been a little bit too snug. So my initial run in these was a total of seven miles with four of those miles being at my target goal half marathon pace of six minutes, 50 seconds per mile. So the first mile, I noticed the incredible weight, or I mean lack of it. Very, very light, very nimble, and a great surface feel underfoot. My feet could almost feel the branches, twigs, and stone pathway underneath. Now I'd be a bit silly there, they couldn't actually feel them, but you, you kind of get my drift, yeah? I split that threshold run up into two blocks of two miles. So the first mile of that, I hit about seven minutes 13, kind of still getting used to the shoes. And the second one, six minutes 54. So I was pretty much just about reaching that half marathon goal pace by about third mile. Had a mile in between the intervals, uh, hit about seven minutes 37, just easing back a little bit, kind of collecting my thoughts a little bit about the shoe. And then another two miles, one at seven minutes 10 per mile, and the last one of the threshold pace miles at six minutes 36 per mile. Final mile to clock off at seven minutes 30 per mile. Certainly I feel the lower drop in this shoe in comparison to the Adios 4. I felt like I wasn't able to kind of concentrate my stride so much to ensure I was hitting the mid or forefoot section of the shoe. It felt like I was having to be nowhere near as mindful about where my foot was striking uh, as I increase the pace to that threshold target pace. I have to say it was very exhilarating listening to the Fratelli's debut album as I was doing this threshold run. It really was great to run fast in this shoe. I can't stress enough. If you want something that's gonna fit for maybe a 5K or a 10K race on road, gotta go for this, it's just ridiculous. I think after recently doing lots and lots of lower pace miles, keeping my heart rate right down, it was good to let rip. The Takumi Sen 6 certainly wanted to go fast and Ed Bud was more than happy to oblige. Turnover felt really great in this shoe. I managed to hit about 170 and then 174 in terms of cadence uh, on those two half marathon target pace intervals. I really felt solid and very stable in this shoe. When you look at the actual outsole there, you can see there's quite a considerable width here, right around the midfoot area. I was a little worried at first. When you look at the outsole, it's got this huge mass of these kind of nubs here. They're really quite hard actually. And it's almost like a shoe you expect to use on a track. You probably could actually use this on a track with great success. But out on the normal trail I use, it really, really worked well. I felt really gripped to the surface, even on some very tight bends. Even later in the run, traction felt really stellar after the shoe had picked up some material on the outsole. I felt like I was gripped to the road like an eagle would do with its talons on its rodent prey. The paths were still glittering with moisture from the rain that we'd had earlier in the day. But the outsole rubber provided ample traction for this effort. So a worthy challenger, certainly for five to 10K distance for the Vaporfly 4% or even the next percent. I think it's a very exciting shoe, certainly because I got it for 104 pounds. Yes, I did have a code to reduce the price, I think the retail's about 140, but that's still a lot cheaper than the Vaporfly Next Percent. Could you wear this for a marathon? I think a lot of people would probably find this a little bit too minimal for the marathon distance. Certainly I'd consider it though for a half marathon. It is a little bit narrow in the forefoot, so if you do have a wider foot, it's probably one to avoid. I don't think it'd really work for heavier runners, but certainly for me, somebody who's about 11 and a half stone, it's a winner and a real revelation. So this shoe certainly captured my imagination as the Sinclair Spectrum did back in the late 80s. Though I think probably using this shoe is a far more healthy pastime than sat at the computer. 
So I think I'll probably give this a two out of three for midsole cushioning, probably a three out of three for the upper comfort. It is ridiculously comfortable. And in terms of the price, I think I'll probably look at giving it a three for value. Though I can't really comment upon durability as of yet after an initial run. She's a good looking shoe, Clark. Three points for looks, it's a beautiful shoe. So I'm gonna give this one 11 out of 12. Stay tuned for more adventures in the Adidas Adi Zero Takomi Sen 6 in the coming weeks. You know I always update you on the music I've been currently listening to. Well, I've dug back into the archives and pulled out something that I really, really loved um, when I first saw the artist live. So I first saw Jens Lechman um, back in, it must be about 2004 maybe, 2005? It's round about that time. Uh, we all went over to a festival over in Minehead uh, and he was playing live and he had a, he's got a great sound. It's kind of like a disco, kind of 60s, croonery sort of sound. It's really great actually. Do check him out, Jens Lechman. Uh, this album, Nightfalls Over Cortadala, is really beautiful. There's some great songs on here. Sipping on the Sweet Nectar is one of my favourites. And Shirian is just beautiful. It's all about him going to see somebody and getting his hair cut. It's like a sort of, uh, some running in illegal hairdressers. It's really bizarre, but a great song. And I Remember Every Kiss, that's a really good tune as well. A brilliant introduction. So do check that one out. Jens Lechman, Nightfalls Over Cortadala. That's about all I've got for you today, guys. If you've got any questions on the Adidas Adi Zero Takumi Sen 6, managed to say it right for once, please post them in the comments below. As usual, I'm really, really happy to answer all of your questions. If you've worn these shoes or any of the Takumi Sen line, please comment below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the thumbs up to give the video a like. Helps to push us up the rate. Make sure you share the video with your friends. My name's Ed Bud. And I'll be seeing you.